lifters had come up out of the, they popped up out of the lifter bore. We don't have any bottom end spares left. This rear cylinder is running hotter than the, this cylinder. This is the engine that we broke the other day. Yeah, um, with a broken rocker. Yeah. Which is in your hand. Rock. To do this up is about four grand. I've got a question there, because there's probably some people watching that know more about this than me. Sunday night, bits of engine everywhere again, bit of a familiar sight. So continuing on from last time, uh, obviously we found a few bits floating around the engine, um, which obviously just asks some more questions, it doesn't answer what, what we're dealing with. Lifters had come up out of the, they popped up out of the lifter bore, and what they'd done by doing that is they uncover the oil way, which then allows the oil pressure to be lower as well, which is not something great. Um, so we had noticed we'd had a slight reduction in oil pressure at full RPM of mm. about 10 pounds, but we just monitored it and ran with it. Um, took the sump off, bearing caps off, check main bearings, check big end bearings, and everything is okay, which is really good news, because we don't have any bottom end spares left. Uh, I've got to do them back up and check the stretch on them, make sure the bolts are good but um, essentially everything's looking good at the bottom end. Um, that okay. um, what's that? Well, oh, it's, clean, I don't know, it's cleaned up a bit that one. It's either been sat with some fuel and oil in it. Um, I just said. Mm. Um, because looking at the combustion chamber, everything looks as it should. Yeah. So it's obviously been sat there like once. So just as a matter of looking at things, actually, what you can see going on here is yeah. this rear cylinder is running hotter than the, this cylinder. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Much. So it looks blacker, but that 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 doesn't mean it's running richer necessarily. Uh, looking at that, I would say that's running hotter um, than this cylinder here. Um, so there's a couple of things that we can do to try and make that work differently. Um, so we'll probably look at restricting water flow in a certain area and relieving it in another. So we'll probably increase the water outlet size on the back of the manifold to try and get a better water flow in this area. Probably really be interesting to put a temperature sticker on the back of that and see how it compares to the front before we do anything. Sure. Yeah. Um, what you've got to remember as well is that the blower will always screw bias in one direction. So the blower is biasing fuel and air towards distribution. It always pushes towards the front. Um, um, let me think, is that to the front? Um, Maybe it's the rear, I'll have to have a look. But it yeah. biases in one direction, so that can really affect the way the fuel distribution is and you can get one end hot than the other. Yeah. But um, I think we'll do some more tests with the temperature stri strips and see whether we think that's actually really an indicator of mm. water engine temperature or whether we've just got a leaner mixture causing a bit more heat. Yeah. Plan now then. Well, so this one here is going to get put aside. Um, and then we're going to put the other cylinder head on this. This from the engine that, that broke the comrod. Yeah. So we're going to put the spare one on that. Yeah. And that's because that's got the new valves and stem seals in, in it. Um, we're putting it on because we can't use the rockers that we want unless we use the other cylinder heads. Oh, okay. And the reason is, I'll show you. So this is the engine that we broke the other day. Yeah, with um, a broken rocker. Yeah. Which is in your broken hand. rocker, aluminium. Um, a really expensive system, actually, made by Jezel, um, which are the best in the business, without, without a doubt, I would say. But application specific, better off with steel for us. So this one's broke. Is that because we're holding high revs for a long time? Yeah, aluminium is just fatigues. It's just the yeah. way it works. Nice and light, so you could rev it probably quite high, but it doesn't like you keep doing it. So, but the difference being is it's got a nice roller bearing on here. It sits really well. It's held really well. 
um, like this, nice and strong, um, good setup. This is the bar that drops onto those machine bits. But you'll notice that all of these are at an angle. They're, they're sort of lent over, so they sit right. on the valve nice. Okay. Yeah. So if we try and screw that in, like I say, what happens is because it's because it's machined flat oh, for that. That's very different, isn't it? It doesn't work. But, but these are machined at the same angle as the valve. Right. So as you see here, that is perfectly lined up with the valve. So when you drop it on, it sits on there and it right. sits at the right angle to the valve. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So these, again, they're on longer bearings, but it's, it is on a single stud on here. It's a bit of a compromise. But with, when you put the big aluminium girdle on the top, it holds all of them, which you'll see when, when you've got it on there. We've had no problems with these setups. So these are a steel steel rocker. And, and you had the same on vintage torque. Same then. on vintage torque. We used to run them over 7,000 RPM and, and, and have it there for hours. Never had a problem with one of these. Probably a quarter of the price of the Jezel setup mm. for this. Made of steel, works really well. Um, that's what we want, but we've got to swap the heads to make it work. I, I don't want to run the Jezel system. I wasn't keen on it when we were putting the engine in, but it's what we had and we couldn't swap it, and then it broke. <laughs> so it made it through the race, so yeah. well done, you got us through. Um, but I'd like to go back to this. We'll, we'll put this on, and then we'll machine this up, and then we'll buy a brand new set of these. Um, th this works out about, you know, a set of these and the associated parts works out about a, a thousand quid per engine. Um, to, to do this up is about four grand. Wow. Yeah. Um. So it looks like we got to use the Brodix heads from the failed Comrade engine. We removed them and unsurprisingly, number one piston had hit the head and bent the valves. The he that head has gone off to Wes at West Cornwall Engine Service to be skimmed and the valves replaced. Fortunately, no other damage has been found. So, got a question there, because there's probably some people watching that know more about this than me. All of the other ones we've run have got this. So this obviously matches the combustion chamber in the cylinder head. Both of those cylinder heads have the same design of combustion chamber and seem to have the same CC volume, but we've got a completely different piston design. Now, anyone got any ideas what, why, what would the advantage of one be over the other with this design? Well, mm. Yeah, yeah. somebody's got an answer. Yeah. Get a hold of us. All right, it's Thursday. Gary's been busy installing the Brodix head, rockers and girdle wow. on the even cylinder bank. We got the damaged cylinder head back from Wes down at West Cornwall Engine Services. He had to take six thou off for it to clean where the piston had hit and he's fitted the two new valves. Here's a clip that Wes sent us of the machining. That's the long block nearly finished. We've got plenty more to do over the weekend and happening. Uh, so we'll try and get another video out next week. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.